Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, this, uh, this special meeting tonight. Uh, quite how we'll describe it, we'll see. We'll let the, uh, the participants describe that in a moment. My name is Paul Taylor. I'm with, uh, uh, I work with a ministry called Creation Today, based in Pensacola. This um, meeting tonight is about a discussion about science and faith and ideas, and uh, it will touch on all sorts of uh, aspects in many ways, whatever the participants really want to uh, discuss on those, uh, those particular issues. This is a conversation tonight. So if you uh, basically imagine that uh, uh, there is a sort of coffee table here, and uh, uh, the two participants are going to be having a chat, which we are privileged to listen in to. Okay, that's, uh, that's the basic premise behind tonight's conversation. Uh, on your right, on my left, is uh, Beth Perkheiser. Beth Perkheiser is a, um, a musician, a music teacher, automatically has uh, my, my sympathy from that point of view, because that's uh, my background too. Um, Beth also thinks a lot and writes a lot and blogs a lot on the subject of, uh, of, of faith and on the, from the point of view of atheism and uh, as she'll tell you a little bit about uh, therefore the background to, to tonight's meeting from that point of view. Emic uh, works uh, also with the ministry creation today and therefore you're not an atheist, you're a Christian and uh, Eric will be approaching this therefore from a Christian point of view and has been speaking on the subject of uh, creation and science for uh, some 13 years or so. So uh, that's tonight's meeting. As I said, I'm just going to be part of the audience now. Please treat both uh, uh, panelists with a great deal of courtesy. Enjoy yourself, relax. You're here uh, uh, as a, an audience listening and eavesdropping on a coffee bar conversation. Please treat it in that method. Thank you very much indeed for coming. Well, Beth and I talked a little bit before, and uh, we said instead of really doing a debate, we'd like to kind of make this a window and then just let us enjoy a conversation with each other and let you guys eavesdrop in, as Paul said. So uh, we're going to get started on just having a little conversation. Later on, we'll invite you guys to ask some questions to either Beth or myself. Uh, and uh, we'll kind of see where the evening goes. So we'll just kind of enjoy enjoy the time. Sound good? Cool. Well, I'd love to know, um, I want to make you feel at ease, I'd love to know why you came to the conclusion of atheism. Obviously, there's probably a ton of stuff that you can give, but could you give me kind of a synopsis of if you grew up Presbyterian and you got siblings that are kind of everything under the sun, what led you to atheism? Maybe you could explain that. Well, I'd really like to preface this with, um, you know, I'm really concerned about science. So that's how I got kind of into this. I want to make it very clear that atheism is, does not mean you have to be an atheist to not buy into younger creationism. You can accept evolutionary theory and you can be a believer. That's not synonymous. Um, how I personally came to be an atheist, um, so many things didn't make sense to me. Okay. Um, so many things that the church was saying? Yes. So many things that... that and the uh, Bible. I read the Bible just page uh, front to back. Yeah. And now, tell me, what is what is it that didn't make sense in the Bible to you? I mean, I'm sure there's plenty you could give us an example, but give me just one example of, okay, I don't buy that, and, and kind of the reasoning behind that. I don't buy the talking snake. Okay. Um, you know. all, basically all of the supernatural <laughs> stuff, huh? <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, sort of, that's you know, how we all came here. I just, it, I've never seen anything supernatural. Right. Everything I've seen has been natural, and it makes sense to me. The theory of evolution explains everything. And it doesn't have to explain everything. I shouldn't put it that way. There are things we don't know. Right. Um, but they, yeah, it's very plausible, and we see this happening today. So that makes sense to me. And. And uh, morality is really probably the number one problem I have with Christianity. The idea that a God would send you to hell, um, punish you eternally for what can only be a finite crime, uh, that's not a moral being. Okay. I want nothing to do with that. Okay. What, um, what would you consider yourself now? Would you consider yourself a full-blown atheist? Uh, you know, Dawkins came out recently and was like, oh, I'm just an agnostic, you know? And, <laughs> If you saw that, if you saw that video, he, he labeled yeah, yeah. himself as far as possible, we're close to an atheist, but not quite an atheist, because he says, look, it's really impossible to be a true atheist. But 
Describe where you're at in that. Okay. Well, I think that um, it's it's possible. Atheism is a very broad category, and people might argue with me on this one. But you're born an atheist. Being a theist means you have a theistic belief. You believe in a god or gods. Um, I think the only truly intellectually honest position is agnosticism, where you don't have a positive belief that there is no God, and you, you're not trying to sell people on the idea that there is no God. Um, but you, you, you don't think there is, but it's something, it's just like science. It's open to falsification. Okay. So, but I would put myself on the Dawkins schedule is one to seven, they get 6.66. <laughs> and you didn't get that from the Bible, did you? <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so a question I would have then, if, you, if you're if you at that level, is um, would you say that it is impossible for God to exist, or you wouldn't go that far? It's not impossible. I think you... Oh, okay. No, I'm just... Okay. okay. If I just said, is it impossible for God to exist, what would you say? I would say you really have to define what, you're, what you mean when you say God, because okay. that's, that's not a... Name, you know. Well, I actually have a definition that Christians use. Just uh, is, if it's okay, it's just yeah, a definition. Sure. Is all it is. Let me uh, pull it up here. God is. Sorry. Just so that you know what I will be arguing for as well, because I don't want people to be confused. Here's the definition again. The definition again. God is a spirit, infinite, eternal, and unchanging. It is being, wisdom, power, holiness, justice goodness and truth so my definition of god is right there and that's what i'll be kind of wanting to talk about as far as as we talk through this he's a spirit so um that's kind of a, a simple definition of what is god so is it impossible that a that a spirit exists that has all knowledge uh all power he's infinite eternal unchanging is that an impossibility that that exists i don't call that a possibility but i don't i don't care so much about this, this the, sounds weird, but um, this is all about, to me, this is about the afterlife. And that's why it's so important to so many people. I really care about this life, and I care about how our beliefs are affecting how we're living our lives. Okay, so what effect does religion have on society versus secularism on society and things like that? Yeah, that really mm. depends on the religion, but of course the primary religion in America is Christianity. Right. Okay, so if this is our definition again, you said it's not impossible for him to exist, but you just kind of don't really care about it? Well, it's not that I don't care. I don't think it can be proved. Okay. Um, let me ask you this question. Is um, is is it impossible for the Bible to be what it claims to be? It claims to be revelation from God. Would you say that's impossible, or do you not go that far into the impossibility realm? I feel comfortable saying it's impossible. Now I'm gonna okay, because I'm gonna ask you how you know that. But you say it's impossible. I say it's impossible, and and I am putting forth. I want to be very clear. Putting forth my opinion. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I don't represent all atheists or anything like that. Um, in my opinion, I can't. Uh, the science contradicts it. Uh, some of the Bible is really interesting. Um, some is very poetic. Um, it's interesting from a historical perspective and as literature. But, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I know you could argue that there are no contradictions or anything, but I, to my own common sense, there are a lot of contradictions. And, the morality issue again it comes down to that. It comes up. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you're saying it's impossible to be what the Bible claims to be, which is revelation from God. I believe it's impossible, and I definitely believe it uh, would be a very bad thing. Okay. And when I ask you how you know that, you're going to say contradictions or things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you want to ask me any questions now, or do you want me to? Okay. Sure. Um, you obviously are a young earth creationist. I am. Um, do you think that somebody who just believes in God but doesn't take a literal view of Genesis is in peril of their immortal soul because of it? Well, the Bible is actually really clear on what is necessary for salvation. It actually keeps it really simple. It says you must believe that Jesus Christ is who we claim to be, which is God. You must believe that he is 
And uh, you must believe in the gospel that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again. So if you have a misunderstanding that God used evolution when it doesn't teach that in his, in his revelation, I'd say you're misinformed. Now, at what level do you actually have the wrong God? That's a good question. If I told you, well, Paul was just up here, and he's from England. He has actually met the Queen of England. If, uh, if I went up to Paul and said, no way, guess what? I've met the Queen of England, too. He's like, he'd be like, wow, that's, that's impressive. I mean, of all the people in the world, not, not a lot of them have gotten to meet the Queen of England. If I said, yeah, she is gorgeous, man, six foot two, all that blonde hair. My goodness, she is a knockout. He'd go, well, wait a minute. You, you said that's the Queen of England? If I'm not describing a shorter, older woman with white hair, he's going to wonder if I really have the right person. And so when somebody says, well, I think God did this, I'm going to say, well, if it doesn't match up with his revelation, with his revealed word, you actually have the wrong God. So at what level is it the wrong God and you don't have the right Jesus? That's a good question. That's a, that would make a great dialogue for a theistic evolutionist and a, and a young earth creationist to say, okay, at what level is it actually not the right God? But am I going to say that it's impossible for them to repent and trust in Christ as their Savior? No, it is not. Does that make sense? Sure. Okay. Um, as an atheist, though, since I don't have to go into the theology, um, are we in peril of being sent to hell by the Queen of England? No, we're not. <laughs> just, make, just making sure. No. She can, kick you out of, she can kick you out of her country. Now, the one we do need to worry about is the king of the universe. He's the one who made everything. If he made it, that means he controls it. He owns it. He really can do what he wants. One of the things you said is, I don't think it's fair for God to institute a... Uh, you know, um, an eternal punishment for a finite crime. Well, you say, well, what if all I did was tell a lie? Well, you think about that. You tell a lie, there's different consequences for telling lies. For example, if I lie to my son, who's five years old, and I say, no, son, you can't have candy because candy will make monsters come up in your closet at night. Okay, well, I just lied to my son. Was that right or wrong? It was wrong. What are the consequences of that? Not much consequence. What if I lied to my parents? What if when I was, well, and it did happen, okay? I lied to my, my dad one time. What are the consequences of lying to my parents? Well, same, same offense, I've lied to him. But now the consequence is he takes off his belt, I have to lay on the bed, and I get a whooping. Um, what if I lied to a police officer? Well, now, now I'm getting, it's the same offense, but it's who I'm lying to. What if I lie to a judge? Now I can be thrown in jail. And you say, are you kidding me? You're thrown in jail just for telling a lie? It's not just the fact that it's a lie, that it's a finite uh, sin. It's who you've offended. So when you lie, especially when you lie to the creator of the universe, he does have a right to have an infinite crime because we've underestimated. Anytime we say um, that it's just, you know, I can't believe God would do that, we're underestimating who God is. So that's the way I would describe kind of why God can institute whatever fine he wants. And anytime we tell him that he's doing it right or he's doing it wrong, it's kind of like, well, whose morality are you using to determine if he's doing it right or wrong? We end up using our own morality and putting our own morality above the creator of the universe's morality. And that's not a good thing. But hopefully that answers that question in a way that makes sense. Well, this is exactly why I think it uh, is religions like this are so dangerous. You appeal to a morality that is different from ours. Different than whose? Different from humans, like you just said. From humans? Uh-huh. Didn't you just say that? Well, I'm a human. From ours? He, has, he has morality, we have ours. No, no, no. I, I'd say there is only one morality. It's his. I mean, if it's based so if it's on... it's his, it's not ours. Oh, okay, then it's not ours. So, where do we get our morality from? Um, we get our, it's an emergent property of, of nature. Um, I mean, where do get, where bonobos get their morality? Where do what? Bonobos, uh, other primate species, they, we, we can tell they, they treat each other um, morally, even rats. Um, you know, we've done, we've done experiments, which really, I think, puts our morality into question, but at least we prove that they can be moral. Um, you know, what, just, what would be your definition of morality then, and where does it come from? Well, it serves an evolutionary purpose. 
um, to we are stronger as a society than we are by ourselves. Um, we by continually lie to you, you're going to stop trusting me, and you're going to let other people know she's a liar. Don't deal with her. You know, there's there's good reason for us to be trustworthy, um, to be uh, uh, accountable to our fellow humans. So society kind of determines this. It just kind of evolves we with do. society. Absolutely, yes. So what do we do when one society's morality disagrees with another society's, mor society's morality? Well, that's the problem with religion because these gods are really disagreeing. And they're causing a lot of problems. <laughs> the <laughs> gods know? are? Yes. Now, obviously, I know one of your arguments is that for us to talk about God, we have to presuppose God. I want to make it clear that I'm just taking on this conversation um, as just so I can talk intelligently about it. I definitely do not believe in your God. Okay. Now, the Bible says that you do, but you're suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. And I think I can... And, and this is just a conversation, but we, we can, uh, I'd love to go through an, a little example and just see what you think about my little, my little example, my little logical thing. But as far as societies being able to have morality, how do we determine which society to go with? In other words, when it's Hitler's morality versus America's morality, which, which one, how do we, why do we call Hitler's wrong and ours right? Because look how it played out. You know? Um, it was playing out great for Hitler. Not really. <laughs> well, it, it didn't. It didn't get to that point until America came to stop it. Right. So if America didn't, if America said, "Hey, his morality," he they came up with that, then it never would have stopped, would it? Well, that's what's so great about political ideology is that it's got a reality check. It, it plays itself out, and it's terrible. Uh, we get rid of it by war if necessary. Um, if if the the morality of the Bible, it doesn't have, it never has a reality check until you die, you know? And then if you guys are right, we're really screwed, um, <laughs> you yeah. know? But, uh, but if we're right, none of us even know. I mean, I really envy you guys that, because we can't go, hey, I'm gonna be laughing at you after, you know, after we're dead. Okay. Um, can, I, can I take you on a logical journey real quick and see where it goes? Okay, let's try it. Um, just an important concept that I like to point out is if somebody says they could be wrong, then they don't really know, do they? Oh, uh, this is a, a knowledge claim. Right. If somebody says, if somebody claims something and then says I could be wrong, do we really have that knowledge? Well, there's a difference between knowledge and opinion. Agreed. There's definitely a difference. Okay. So if I follow it by I could be wrong, then I'm no longer talking about knowledge, I'm talking about my opinion. Well, let me give you an example. If I said the speed limit outside on this road right here is 45 miles an hour, but I could be wrong. Do I know what the speed limit is? Do I have knowledge of that? Well, see, that's what's so great about empirical tests. I can go out and look and see whether it is or not, and then it's knowledge. Right, but, before, be but before that time, if I say I could be wrong, then I can't call it knowledge. For example, the Sears Tower. If I said the Sears Tower is 1,512 feet tall, but I could be wrong. Well, let's not confuse knowledge with facts. Okay. Knowledge, though, has to be factual, doesn't it? Can I know something that is not true? Could I know that Elvis Presley is the current president? No. I couldn't because knowledge presupposes that it's true, correct? I suppose I, uh, I'm making an observation here. Um, when I'm watching your videos on this, this seems to me like gotcha rhetoric. You know what I mean? You're no. leading me into this thing where I just said something ridiculous. But, okay. No, I'm just trying to be, um, I guess, there's not, I don't believe there's going to be a gotcha moment. It's just a, a consistency thing. Knowledge must be true, correct? Can I have knowledge if it's false? Yes. I could have you a know, belief. You can, actually, yeah. You can have the knowledge that... I'm not talking uh, about knowledge that something is false. In other words, could I have knowledge that Elvis Presley is the current president if that's not true? You could have knowledge that there are three people actually believe that. That would be knowledge. So you could have knowledge in a way. But, but is it true? 
Is it true that he's president? I don't think so. Right. And even if you had three people that thought so, could you say, well, then they have knowledge of it? No, you have knowledge that they think they have knowledge. Right. So if it's not true, can it be called knowledge? I got the definition of knowledge if you want me to pull that up. Knowledge is justified, true right. belief. And words are what we use to communicate with each other. Words aren't reality. They're symbols of reality. So are talking about this right now. Um, I hopefully we'll get to a point where we totally understand where the other person is, is from. So yeah. um, and that's why I gotta I gotta ask this at first because if we don't nail nail down that knowledge has to be true, well then I could claim anything I want as knowledge even if it's not true and it wouldn't make any difference, right? Well I, I think in order to accept it as knowledge it needs to be capable of being empirically tested. Well, of course, all, all okay. information is capable of that. So is, is, would you agree that knowledge has to be true in order for it to be knowledge? And I'm not trying to belabor this. I'm just going, to me, that it just I, seems I like suppose, a simple thing. But, you know, I just think the knowledge of the day, and it can change when we learn more. But that was correct for that day. But if we but, find out that it was wrong, I'll go ahead and, and then, it, then it wasn't actual knowledge. We dismiss it, it as knowledge fact, of that. Okay. Correct. OK. Um, out of all the knowledge in the universe, Beth, how much do you think you got? That absolutely cannot be quantified. So okay. it is pointless to answer that question. If, you can, just for sake of illustration then, let's just suppose that you and I together have 1% of all the knowledge in the universe. It's not that much, can't even quantify it. We don't know how much knowledge there is. Um, it could be finite, it could be infinite. We don't even know that, okay? But let's just suppose that we've got 1% of all the knowledge in the universe. Is it possible that out of the 99% that we don't have, that something could contradict this whatever little bit, let's say it's 1% that we think we got, could something out there contradict what we think we know right now? Everything we think we know. Not everything we think we know. I Not don't everything? Agree with that. No. No? No. And you have to keep in so mind. So you do believe in absolutes? I, I do. I'm one of those. Okay. I don't know. I think this, this is where you get into almost like two people speaking two different languages. Philosophers speak a much deeper language. You know, it's like they're considering every little contingency. So if you're talking to somebody trained in philosophy, they might actually answer that question differently. I feel comfortable sticking with the absolutes. Um, and so you're saying there's nothing in that nine nine in, in that vast amount that you don't know. Mm -hmm. There's no way that something could contradict what you know right now. There's no possible way that could happen. Well, as you said, the only thing I could know is something that's true. So. And that's then what I'm getting If it contradicts, then it wasn't knowledge in the first place. Correct. Right. So, so I would like to point out, too, that knowledge is a little bit different from facts in that you can't have knowledge without having a conscious mind and that's part of it, the subjective experience. You can experience. have knowledge but, without a conscious mind? No, you have, to have a sub you have to have a conscious mind to even have knowledge. I mean, okay. it's yeah, this yeah, universe. I have, yeah, okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Yep. So the only way for all the knowledge to be known would, I guess, be if your, your um, hypothesis is right, that there's a God that knows everything. And yeah, so I'm going to ask you that out of this 1% of things that you say, no, there's things in here that I can know absolutely for sure. How do you know that it can't be ever contradicted? Uh, to me, that I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, it's just this is going down the... Yeah, but how, how do you know it? How, how do you know that what you have right now, the knowledge you have, can never, ever, ever be contradicted? How do you know that? Because, I mean, I know I'm talking to you right now. How do you know that? It's ridiculous to suppose otherwise. I'm, I'm okay with just calling it, well, we're going into the ridiculous area, you know, which isn't going to further human knowledge at all. And that's kind of why we're here. Right, but if I were to ask you, how do you know that we're talking right now? What would you appeal to? What would be your justification? You want me to say that I'm appealing to my sense. Well, is that what you're appealing to? Uh, our sense of the world. Okay, I'm going to give you that. So you're appealing to your senses that, hey, my senses tell me that we're talking right now, and therefore course, we're talking right now. Of course, that's how okay. we apprehend the world. Right, so if we keep going back, though, to the infinite regress, how do you know that your senses are even valid? Well, okay, um, I, I know you got into this with Thunderfoot and yeah. that, you know, he started talking about the basal assumptions. Right. Um, 
the universe exists. Two, you can learn something about reality. Three, models with predictive capability are better than models without. Um, to me, those exist for the purpose of keeping us from wandering into ridiculous conversations. That's why they're there. Uh, you know, because uh, it's almost, it, it seems ironic to me that we're going to spend a lot of time talking about knowledge in this way, and, and your movement, it spreads a lot of, a lot of false information. So to me, your, the young earth creationism is impeding knowledge, and, and that's very bad because I've got students who, they come home with more homework than I ever had in my life. Yeah. You know, our human knowledge, we, get, we know more and more, so the kids have to know more and more. And um, so this young earth creationism stuff that contradicts what we know to be true in science is, uh, the obvious, it's lowering our knowledge. But I'm, I want to find out how do we know what we know before we even go there? Because if, if I said, I know God exists because God exists, would you accept that? No. No. But you, I, I would accept that you believe that's knowledge. Okay, but would you accept that as truth? I wouldn't accept that as truth. Okay. For when me. you tell me, I sense that my senses are valid, should I accept that? You can if you want to. Don't have to. Is it a valid argument? That, that my senses are... My if you senses. sense that your senses are valid, because you said, I sense that we're talking, I'm using my senses, I said, how do you know your senses are valid? And you kind of said, look, that gets into a, a rabbit trail. If I said, hey, Beth, seriously, if you're sensing that your senses are valid, that's a circular argument. <laughs> are you okay with that? Are you okay with circular arguments? Are circular, circular arguments okay? Look, the senses are how we apprehend the world. Um, are everybody's senses valid? Are there people that have invalid senses? This was irrelevant. No, it's actually incredibly relevant. Okay. Because if I, like for example, if I asked you, and this is just, again, I'm not paying attention to the audience, I'm just going, hey Beth. Mm -hmm. For example, if I said, is everybody's reasoning valid? Beth, is everybody's reasoning valid? Some are better than others. Okay, but not everybody has a valid form of reasoning, do they? Which is why it's so good to check with other people to get consensus on things. So we're going to, and what do you use to get that consensus? You use your reasoning. You're using your reasoning to validate your reason. And you're using your reason to reason that I'm reasoning. But I've got an avenue to you're certainty. Just, you're just making two trips around the circle instead <laughs> of one. Not really. I'm actually showing that if you stick with just that model of I know I exist because I exist. I reason because I reason. My senses validate my senses. You, it's, it's a flawed argument. Okay. It doesn't account for reality that we see today. Okay. Well, I understand that's your view. Well, it's actually, it's actually true. It's not just my view. It's actually true that that's a flawed argument. Okay. So what would you appeal to outside of your senses and your reasoning to validate your senses and reasoning? I would um, suggest that if this is off the topic, um, and that what people believe is affecting how the the quality of our life here. Okay. Right, and you're. I am fine with you believing whatever you want to believe. Really, that you should have the right, um, and I don't. That's why I don't try to spread atheism. Um, you know, I don't try to make other people atheists, even though I'm a big mouth. I was going to say, hang on, your Facebook page, you are really, really, really trying to promote atheists. I'm putting mine too out of there. I'm not, I'm not, why I'm, would you I don't do think that? I've ever, ever converted a single person, so I guess that's why I'm a big mouth. They're not going to believe me anyway. You know, <laughs> the people that interact with me are already other atheists. But we are really concerned with this movement of yours. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're really concerned about, again, I don't talk about all atheists, but my crowd. Um, we're concerned about that your your Bible is, is telling you that, that homosexuals can't get married, for instance. We're very, very concerned about that. We, we think that all of our citizens should have equal rights. We think uh, we, we are concerned with animal rights. And we, we do accept <laughs> our senses. Uh, to tell us these things. So, so but, what? But when I get down, I know you're skipping over though. You're saying, I don't have to have a foundation for my worldview. I can just right. have my worldview. And I'm going to argue, right. your foundation is actually founded on 
the laws of logic. Okay, what's that? Founded on uh, the laws of mathematics, the laws of science, the laws of morality. We all appeal to these things. So is that why you won't engage on the level of why are we denying rights to our fellow citizens because of this book? Oh no, I got no problem engaging in that. But the problem is, if you if you can't yet make sense of your worldview, I'm going to keep challenging. Hang on, before we talk up here on any evidence or anything like that, let's find out if our worldview actually makes sense. My worldview makes sense to me, and yours makes sense to you. Okay, if they're contradictory, can they both be true? No. Exactly, because of the law of non-contradiction, right? So you're, you do believe in truth. You do believe that somebody is right and somebody is wrong. In some cases, in most cases, yeah. Okay, like sitting right here with the whole, I believe God, I'm a theist, you say he doesn't exist, it's right, agnostic, atheist, whatever you want to call yeah, it. And then, again, I'm not saying that God doesn't exist. I'm just saying okay. that God has not been proven. And the fact that we reframe the world through our senses and any sort of waffling you can do about that, um, it just seems irrelevant to me. It really okay. does. So if I ask you, Beth, you believe you can know things and that they can't be contradicted, they are absolutely true. So you do believe in absolute truth? Sure. Okay. Tell me one thing you know and how you know it to be true. And it, this is going back to my senses. I apprehend the world through my senses. So, and, I, and, how I do you and how do you validate that? I trust it to a, to a certain extent. After how? this is over, I'm going to be able to look at this film. I can stand watching myself. Um, and I can see, yeah, I really did talk to Eric tonight. I mean, it, it just to me, it's just a continuum of this gets ridiculous. It's just not worth talking about it. And here we have real issues that we could be talking about. Here's the problem that I see, Beth, and this is just <laughs> what I see. The, the atheist position does not, okay, would you say that the world is strictly material? Are you a materialist? I suppose. Most atheists. Are you talking about philosophical naturalism? Sure. Okay, so the world is only made out of matter. I'm actually going to say that, but to me, that's the only thing that's that's manifested itself so far. Okay. What about, are, is there such a thing as the immaterial world? No, I don't think so. Okay. What about the laws of logic? Are they made out of matter? No. So what are they? They're immaterial. They're products of our mind. So they're immaterial. So we're getting into a semantic game again. Immaterial. Well, what I'm pointing out is there is an immaterial world, isn't there? There's a, a world of, of the mind. Is it material or immaterial? Imma I guess immaterial. It's okay. not spiritual. Like, okay. It just depends. You know, one of the problems of, of language is we have a lot of different definitions for most words. So that's why we have really, dictionaries to try yeah, to hold us okay, to certain well, things. Yeah, but you know, one person could be using one definition, the other is the other. Okay, immaterial to me is something not made out of matter. Are there things that are not made out of matter? Okay, then you, you like you have to define what things. Because I already did ideas, I think, thoughts. That. Yeah, the law of non-contradiction well, okay, is okay. that made out of matter? Okay, I uh, okay. Um, any thought that we have and any emotion that we that we experience does have a material um, reaction in our brain. We have uh, chemical changes. You can watch it on a brain imaging thing. So in a way, yeah, our, our thoughts about logic, in a way they are material. Is the law of non-contradiction material or immaterial? This is so irrelevant. <laughs> well, I see it as incredibly relevant because for a materialist to say, so, most atheists are materialists. They'll say, hey, the natural world is all there is. The material world is all there is. And I'm going to say, well, the immaterial laws of logic, the immaterial laws of mathematics, the immaterial laws of science, they all existed. Whether They exist whether the material world is here or not, right? Um, laws of logic. Blah, blah. Yeah, actually, no. I, I think they have a subjective nature to them. That So I man invented the laws of logic? Man understands them. Man is here to have that subjective experience with the material world. We are material, um, and we that's our understanding of it. Right, so did we invent so, the laws of logic? So if we didn't exist, the laws of logic, then... Would they uh, exist? 
I believe the this world, this universe, is logical. And that's all that we can understand. Okay. I like, I like, so I, it, it's outside of man, and it, it's not contingent on man. It needs a subjective mind. So before man got here, the laws of logic possibly didn't exist. It's it's just immaterial. I, it, things um, like it's this goes back to the question of if a tree falls in a forest, does it make noise? If nobody's there to hear it, really, no, it, it doesn't. Does, right? No, actually, it doesn't make noise if some nobody's there. No, because what is noise is um, it takes a subject noise and an is object. Away. It takes, but nobody can hear. So just because There's we don't have a hear. receiver, so uh, it, if, if I was transmitting a radio wave but there were no radios in the world, does that mean the radio wave doesn't exist? No. Of course. Okay. So the noise exists, whether there's somebody to hear, there to hear it or not, right? Right. So there's somebody here to, there to hear it. That's the only reason that something like logic would be... We, we wouldn't have laws of logic as a, as a subjective mind would understand them if there's no subjective mind. So, so the laws of logic would not exist if a subjective mind wasn't here to... The universe would still be logical, but we wouldn't have laws of logic. Where would they... what would happen to them? It would still be logical. I mean, laws of logic are, are things that we have used to explain the universe. Correct. Right. And they explain something that doesn't actually exist in nature. They're immaterial. They're universal. They apply everywhere. And they never, ever change, do they? Oh, no. Right. Although this, this conversation seems pretty illogical. It, it's illogical? To spend as much time on something like this, instead of talking about issues that are really affecting the world, well, I'd really like to get into that. That's, that's okay. why I agree to this. Here, here's the problem that I see. Um, you, you use the laws of logic, but you consider yourself either a really strong agnostic or atheist. And atheism says that the universe is only material, so and it's always changing, and it's not um, it's not uh, eternal. So what says that atheism? Is yeah, that just atheism. Would, atheism would hold doesn't that. say squat. It really doesn't. Atheism is just a lack of belief in God. And so, therefore, I would have to say that the universe yeah, it really is. Doesn't have to say anything. There's just no positive beliefs. Okay, what, what do you what do you believe about you it? You ten, get ten atheists up here, and you get probably ten at least slightly different answers. Okay, then let's deal with what Beth thinks, what and not worry think? about what everybody else thinks. Beth, is the universe only material? Because I'm going to ask you, Beth, how do you get immaterial laws in a material world? I'm going to ask you how you get unchanging. I'm going to ask you how you get unchanging laws in a world that's always changing. Is the universe is constant change a part of the universe? It'd be like you're misunderstanding the terms of unchanging and changing. Okay, is constant change a part of the universe? Do you within, that within, believe? Within, um, within an unchanging pattern, we've got we've got various. So this you're trying to get me to say we've got the laws in case, and that's why blah blah blah. Um, yeah, it does. It just doesn't seem like you're you're wanting to get under anything because the atheist worldview, the atheist worldview would hold your worldview, Beth. Your worldview would, world. okay. would hold that the universe is only made out of matter, that it's constantly changing, right? Yeah, I mean, you sure, of course it changes. And that it's not necessarily eternal. No, it it's had, not necessarily eternal. Okay. We, we, only have, we have space time, and it's, right. it, we wouldn't have time if, if the universe didn't change. Yet you use laws of logic, laws of science, laws of math, and laws of morality that are universal, immaterial, and they don't ever change. I'm asking how can your world, which is exact, your worldview is exact opposite of everything you use, laws of logic, laws of mathematics, laws of science, and laws of morality. How can you account for those things? Because everything you're going to give me is, okay, science says this. Morality is like this. And I'm going to say, hold it, hold it, hold it. Beth, your worldview can't even say that there is a universal, immaterial, unchanging law of math, logic, science, or morality. Okay. It, 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 it can't even get off the ground to even have that discussion. I brought something in case okay. this conversation went this way. 
<laughs> I, this is thanks to Concordance on the Magic Sandwich show. <laughs> because it, it sounded pretty, uh, pretty intelligent. And I'm, no way am I going to sound this intelligent. Um, the problem is you don't account for an objective and absolute moral, scientific, and logical law. If God exists, we can't use our reason to prove he or she doesn't. We can't account for reason in the Christian worldview because you can't account for objective, logical absolutes. In your Christian worldview, the laws of logic are subjective and limited because they are contingent upon a God and not the other way around. You said yourself that you, sur you surrender your reason to this being. You would have to accept anything, no matter how illogical. 2 plus 2 equals 5, for instance. It's a subjective set of non-absolute laws so every argument you begin to make is dependent on whether the subjective laws of logic apply. You can't reason about your God because your laws of logic don't have to apply to you. Your logic is of limited scope. Every logical law has a potential exception. That is the God you have surrendered your reason to. Now, do you believe what he just said there? Does every logical law have an exception? Definitely not. He's describing your worldview, where a God exists who can be logical and illogical at the same time. No, our worldview does not teach that. Okay. So he's not describing my I worldview. I heard Cy can indicate whatever he's going to say. And you guys, I'm, I'm going to just compliment you. You guys are very clever. I think that you've done a fantastic job <laughs> of understanding that, for instance, um, the theory of evolution, you've done a fantastic job of knowing how to attack that. Uh, without knowing science, you know, you're very sophisticated knowing how to attack science. Um, and this stuff is it's very clever too. Um, well, and Beth, I gotta say, my goal is not to attack science. I love science. I, yeah, you say I, that. I agree with science. Okay. I, I really do. Well, then let's talk I, my, about science. My shall honest we? goal here, Beth, is Talking I science. care about people. Yeah, okay. If somebody was, if the God of the Bible who is all powerful, could he make a snake talk? I care about people too, which is why I wanted to talk about how human is affecting education. Could an all powerful rights, God, human rights, could an all powerful God make a snake that's talk? Why, that's why I don't believe in an all powerful God. It's, it's, it's ludicrous. Let's, let's get right down to the heart of this thing, Beth. If I could right here, right now, give you enough evidence and prove the God of the Bible said, look, and you said, wow, Eric, you did it. If I could do that, would you worship him? If I could prove... God would have to... I'm not I talking... supposed to be worthy of worship, but... I mean, it's hard for me to imagine... Try to imagine a leader. I mean, really, who do we know for sure? We know people. We don't know God. We can think we know God. Um... Would you want to follow a leader who wants your constant worship and uh, hey, you better be grateful to me and and that just seems rather odd. I just can't imagine that a, a God who would create this entire universe would be concerned with our every. But look. see, it's actually the exact opposite of that. Okay. It's not that it's that he is worthy of that. And he is. Does he send he, people to hell? He created everything. Did he use evolution to do it? <laughs> no, he didn't. Hmm. He didn't use evolution to do it. Why not? Why didn't he use evolution? Mm -hmm. He chose not to. He told, told us exactly how he did it uh, in his revealed word. And that's why right. I still want to ask you, I still want to challenge you on, could you be wrong about what you know? Because if I said I know something absolutely for sure that God is God, you're going to say, well, how do you know that? No, I'm not. I'm going to say that's fine. But okay. let's talk about evolution. I know that God is God. Okay. Okay, so have you accepted that? Do you believe that now? I believe it. You believe it. I know, but do you believe it? If I said he's God, do you now accept that as true? No. Right. So that's not enough for you, right? But that's what you're trying to say to me. That's, I don't say that you have to believe me. I'm, not, I'm really not trying to sell atheism. What I'm trying to sell... Or really, I didn't, you shouldn't even word, use that word "sell." So my stuff is for free back there. <laughs> um, there's a there's a paper that has just a fantastic links on it that has just a million videos about evolution, about how the brain works, confirmation bias, consciousness. Um, so anyway, check that out in the video. I'm going to put those links in there. 
And I still got to ask, is all of that absolutely true and it can never, ever, ever be contradicted? Science is falsifiable. Okay, so you don't know. <laughs> if it can be falsified, then you can't declare it as absolute truth. I don't care about declaring it. I think that we can meet as, as adults and discuss how we can live together more peacefully than you know, having these fights over, well, evolution didn't happen. I really want to get to that. We've been talking about this for close to an hour. Yeah. Evolution, microevolution versus macroevolution. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, I would I say. Know you it <laughs> I would right. say debate or conversation, uh, discussion presupposes truth. It presupposes facts, and I haven't quite found out if you're saying yes, there are absolute truths, or no, there aren't. Because if you hold to no, there are not absolute truths, I'm going to ask you, how do you know that? Because you're making an absolute truth claim. If you say that there are absolute truth, and then you give me your foundation for that absolute truth. And, uh, and you justify that, then we're able to talk about microevolution, macroevolution, we're able to talk about all that, but we've got to get down to the foundation of the worldview. We really don't. We really could talk about this. Yeah, but here's the problem, Ben. If you say you could be wrong, if you say, look, science doesn't go to absolute truth, it goes to degrees of certainty, <coughs> does it do any good to talk about it if you could be wrong? Yes, it does good to talk about it. Um, the way we advance as a species is we take our best understanding of the world and we use that to live and to make our societies as good as we can. Um, and I think it is important. It, it seems like you're really very uncomfortable with the idea of false viability. Um, well, it, because we already discussed this, knowledge, true knowledge cannot be falsified. And yet you're saying Science says everything is falsifiable. Well, it needs to be falsifiable to be considered science. Otherwise, you can't perform science on it. <laughs> it has to be falsifiable? Yeah. It's, it's, otherwise, it's not open to testing. And that's how we understand the world. Is, you know, but do, you, you, do, can... you do understand that what you're saying is it's possible that it's not true. It's not possible that everything that we've figured out is not true. It is not possible. I'm is sorry. everything falsifiable? If we get new evidence, that's a little bit more open. It, but the probability, I think that's what we get down to probability. What's the probability? Let's say you've got a, somebody on trial for murder. And the evidence is he copped to it. I just blew that guy away. He deserved it. He's, you've got DNA evidence. <laughs> you've got a video of him. And you've got 100 eyewitnesses. Um, is it OK to say we have knowledge that guy is guilty. Yeah. There's such a thing as a, an over preponderance of evidence that it, we can say, OK, maybe the apple is going to come up in the sky tomorrow rather than the sun. But does it do, any, does it do us any good to discuss that? It's so, it's so ridiculous that it's not worth taking time to discuss. But it, knowledge has to be true. So if you're about so. to talk about stuff that you say, this is all falsifiable, I'm going to go back to your very worldview and I'm going to say, but Beth, if it all could be wrong, um, like for example, is everything falsifiable? I the, would claim say, that, the claim that everything should be falsifiable. It, no, it needs to be subject to falsification in order for us to make claims about it. Is that subject to falsification, what you just said? No, this is just silly. No, I'm, yeah, I, I'm really serious too. Um, we talked about is this that for possible? a while. I. But <laughs> well, what you're saying Let's is, talk. I don't Let's care if I have a this. foundation. I don't care if everything I say is wrong. That doesn't matter to me. I think it's a ridiculous supposition that everything I say could be wrong. I, uh, Arn Raw answered. By the way, his name's Arn, not Aaron. Um, Arn Raw had a good answer to that. It's like we're all we're all wrong to some degree about things. But if you, the, could basically, you, could you be your, wrong your, to some position, about that? your position is a position that disallows conversation. Well, what it does is it, um, it, simply, it simply reveals our foundation. It reveals okay. our presuppositions. OK. And that's what I'm trying to do. OK. Well, I'm I can tell you, I presuppose that this is a natural world. 
and that if we talked about ridiculous things, we're not going to be able to do anything about that natural world. I'm, so I'm not trying to be insulting, but I do want to have a conversation. Right, so you're presupposing that the natural world exists and that you are in reality. And yet when I say, sure. hey, uh -huh. is everybody's reasoning about reality valid? No, it's not. How do you know that yours is well, valid? We're talking about everybody in the world. Let's okay. talk about you and me. All right, Beth. And let's talk is about the issue that we came here to talk about. Okay, you Beth. How do you know that your reasoning is valid? This is why I wanted to go with equal time in the first place because this okay. is just, we need to we need to move on. That's all but right. you understand. I know you want to practice your presupposition, but no. But you understand, it's it would be almost pointless to go and talk about evidence of stuff. When you're saying, when in your worldview, evidence, which must be true, doesn't really make sense. Evidence makes sense to me. Oh, let's put it that way. Okay, but can you justify it is the real question. Yes. And that's what, that's what I've been trying to get is okay. your justification, my and that's justification. what I haven't gotten. My, uh, let me give you my justification. My justification, just so you understand where I'm coming from, is that if we do not have revelation from the one that knows everything and the one that cannot lie, then we're forced in the position of saying that we don't know anything. Okay. Now you're now saying that you're you know saying, things, but you're not justified. See, this is, you are saying that atheists say that we can't know anything. You're the one who's saying that. I, don't, I haven't heard any atheists say that, and I'm not saying that. Um, I've heard lots of atheists say that, and that's why when you say no, we can't, okay, Truth. You say we can know things to be true. Can you give me a definition of truth? I already told you. I, I, the truth is I find this line of questioning um, irritating and irrelevant. Because it's exposing the foundation that your worldview doesn't have. You think that, and you can, you're welcome to think that. I think that we have real issues that we could talk about. So what is truth? What is um, your position on microevolution versus macroevolution? What do you would it do any good to talk about that if we don't even know what truth is? Yes. It would? Yes. How? Yes. I remember, else? we're having a conversation with this. Hands, would it, would it be worth talking about evolution? Appeal to majority, <laughs> you want me to, I thought we were going to have a conversation like that. We're not having a conversation. You're keeping us from having a conversation. Well, no, what I'm trying to do, okay, before I can say what micro and macro evolution, we're presupposing that there is something that's true here, and that's why I'm going, okay, before we get there, if you're willing to say, you know what, Eric? I'll admit that I'm borrowing from your worldview. Then we can move on to that stuff. Yeah. Until that point, it's really it's really pointless. Okay. Uh, then we we can't have a conversation. I'm sorry. That makes it really tough, doesn't it? So what is truth? The truth is we need to talk about things that matter, not word games. I, this I'm, not, is great. I'm not playing this word is, games. I mean, this is fantastic. I mean, it's it's a way to sound like. You're making I, a logical argument. Well, I am making a logical argument. To you. Well, this what is, is what is truth? What is logic? Okay. I mean, you, you've said that things should, can be falsifiable, and I'm asking if that could be falsifiable. And you're, you're is, just, you don't want to engage is, in any of this. This is gotcha rhetoric. I don't want right. to continue. You, that's right. Well, in, 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 a, in a logical, wasn't. In a lo I wasn't going there earlier. In a logical, <laughs> in, a, in a logical talk and logical communication, it is because the Christian worldview, Beth, is the only one that can make sense of the reality that we see today. It might be the only worldview that makes sense to you. It doesn't make sense to a lot of people. So I'm going to go on. Um, I want to point out that there are more creationists in the world who believe in a different creation myth than there are Christian crea creationists. Uh, there are more religious people who accept the theory of evolution than there are um, it's religious people. So are you appealing no. to the majority now? Is that what makes things right? Is that what make makes sure things true? I want to make sure that people understand that. Is this that what makes things a, true? No, definitely not. And what is truth? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark, excuse me. Mark, do you want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> well, He's, he's, he's into philosophy. I'm not. I hate it. Okay. It's just a waste of time. <laughs> you, you want me to tell you what some people think truth is and what I think truth is? Some people would give the correspondence theory of truth, and they would say truth is that which corresponds to reality. What do you think about that one? Sure. Yeah? That's what you, that, you're going to hold to that one? Come on. This is gotcha rhetoric. I want to move on. 
Why is it necessary to believe that the earth is only 6,000 years old? Because the one who knows everything and cannot lie has revealed that to us such that we okay. can be certain of it. Okay, my brain has revealed <laughs> yeah, <let's see. laughs> to me and that such that I know that it really is. <laughs> Just so you know, this I mean, is a live, just, live broadcast. We can't just follow. Oh, okay. please. Plus those ladies. That's not, that, that was my brain. It wasn't me. Um, <laughs> okay, the Young Earth Creations Movement is putting a lot of disinformation out there, and I'd like them to answer some questions for me. Um, how did the Earth get created a thousand years after the Sumerians invented glue? Uh, how did Noah's flood occur? I mean, one of the some of the the um, proofs that you guys have used for the the flood has been that there are that there are flood stories from all around the world. And how could there be flood stories, you know, accounts of the flood from all over the world, if they were dead from Noah's flood? <laughs> um, the DNA evidence that we have would clearly indicate if it bottlenecked back four thousand some years ago, um, and it. Clearly does not. Radiometric dating. Uh, this is where I think young earth creationism is really, uh, really clever. I mean, you know, you just poke holes at it um, by saying things like, you know, radiocarbon dating will put dinosaurs and people the same age. <laughs> okay, but which which truth claim would you like to stick with here? Let's just have a conversation about. Okay. Which, which, what, what do you want to say? Have a conversation here. Say it again. This is this is just a really good way to put off having a real conversation. No, it gets it to is. the very foundation of it. You might think so. I don't. So you're, anyway, you're making claims right now. Okay. So anyway, um, I guess I'll just go on. So anyway, radiocarbon dating only goes back fifty to sixty thousand years. So anytime you test that on a fossilized dinosaur it's going to say it's no older than 50 or 60,000 years. Um, it's not the right uh, radioactive clock to use. There are different radioactive clocks. The scientists know the exceptions to these things, like there's um, exceptions in riverbeds, uh, and they will, they will publish these, and then creationists will jump on it and say, well, radiometric dating doesn't work here and here and it looks like oh my gosh it's not very reliable well scientists know when it's not reliable they know why it's not reliable and I'm going to appeal to common sense here who would know more about science scientists or religion or non-scientists you know it's interesting that since you're addressing the audience it's interesting that just about every branch of science was actually started by somebody who was religious so that is not a valid form of argument to say who knows more about science. The problem here is though, she's making claims of truth, but we haven't defined what truth is. She's using laws of logic, but she hasn't accounted for laws of logic. She's using laws of science, but she hasn't accounted for laws of science. That's why it, I was trying to get to this at the very beginning and it drug out for an hour and I'm sorry you guys said to sit through that and some of you are getting kind of frustrated by that, but it doesn't do any good to move on to truth claims if we haven't established what truth is. It doesn't do any good to move on to knowledge if we say that we can't have knowledge. So this is why the very foundation of this discussion, of this conversation, has to rely on is there truth, something that can be known, is there knowledge. We have to go to these basic assumptions and basic standards before we can move to the science. Before we can talk about the laws of science that are universal, immaterial, and unchanging, and they're only accountable, and they're only justified by a universal, immaterial, unchanging God. They're not accounted for with a strictly material world that's always changing and is not uh, uh, eternal. It can't account for these basic things that we're using to try to have a conversation. That's what makes this so important. And that's why I say we can't move away from that until we establish what is truth. How do we know that science is reliable? The, the fundamental uh, assumption in science is called the uniformity of nature. Yet the, the atheistic worldview 
cannot account for the uniformity of nature without begging the question, without making a logically falsifiable argument. So that's the problem, Beth, with moving on to that. Okay, you have your say. I'm going to just have my say again. All right. Um, just don't make any truth claims. Oh, okay, come. Ask stupid questions. Yeah, if you want. Common sense. Um, one of the things that young earth creationism does is they appeal to your common sense when we're dealing with scientific matters. And that is the one place where the world is going to be, science is going to be very non intuitive. Uh, that's the one place that you want to check your common sense. Is that true, Beth? And um, is that but, true? So what they they try to apply common sense to science, but then they don't apply common sense when it comes to uh, like, for instance, of course, who who would know more about science? Um, of course, that science was started by people who were religious, which disproves your claims when you make these claims that uh, all scientists have a non-atheistic worldview. Um, well, actually, I've geology... Never made, I've never made okay, that claim, good. just so you know. Okay, geology was... My claim is started. that everybody believes in God, and that's what God has revealed to us. I and know that's we suppress the truth in unrighteousness. That's my claim. Right. Well, uh, because you're saying the scripture is literally true, and that's your And without it, you wouldn't even know anything, and, and the words coming out of your mouth wouldn't make sense if that well, wasn't Well, I think true. there are a lot of people out there, and they will understand my words. So let's, I'm going to go ahead. That's um, based on my worldview, though. Okay. okay. So. Thank you. you what, you're basing yourself on your worldview. That's fine. Um, so let's see. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and go to some of the most common things that I, I run into on the Internet, you know, with people who are confused about evolution. One is, well, it's just a theory. So this is the fallacy of equivocation where theory means one thing in science and it means something something else in uh, in just everyday use like I have a theory why so few young earth creationists are scientists this everyday use um, theory that's used in science is an overarching explanation for uh, tens of thousands of facts that we have that support the theory of evolution facts uh, are supposed laws, to be true right and um, so those two things, that's some, one thing I'd like to clear up. Um, let's see, uh, why do we, if we come from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? Uh, that's a common one. Well, we had a common ancestor with monkeys. <laughs> we, had, we shared 98% of our DNA with chimpanzees. Is that true? And yes. Thank you. But we don't even know what truth is yet. That's just crazy. And if, if most people, understand that that's just nonsense. Well, it doesn't do any good to make it, you just made a truth claim. Well, let me we're, ask, going, okay. we're going back let me ask to, you okay. get to talk, I we're get not, to talk, because you're, you're really not, refusing to have a conversation. We're 90, I'm trying to, you're, you're addressing you're, the you're audience. You're refusing, I'm trying oh, yeah. to have a conversation. Of course I'm, of course I'm, they might be willing to okay, listen Okay, you to say me. we're 98% similar to chimps. Well, how do you know that? You just made a truth claim. I want to know how you know that that's true. So anyway. <laughs> So you don't want to have a conversation anymore? No, no, no. Answer the question. Presupposition. Yeah. Why? Because your presuppositions don't work? We're up and going on. Um, I, can, I, can see why you want to, one, I can see why you want to avoid that, Beth. I can see why I wanted to avoid you. I asked you not to interrupt me over and over because it would throw me. It's, oh, I won't do that. Well, you began doing that, and we also said we were going to have a conversation, and you began talking tried, to the audience. I tried. We had an honor to talk about presuppositionalism. So you want to lecture me? I won't that what start you. you. I, won't, I won't start this conversation until you admit I'm right and you're wrong. And That's so not you, a conversation. Yeah, let's have a conversation, and let's start it with our perspective worldviews. My worldview says absolute truth exists. What does your worldview say, Beth? I, my absolute <laughs> worldview is that... Your movement is harming our country. Okay, that's a truth claim. How do you know that to be true? I Absolutely know. true. <laughs> because, because homosexuals can't get married. Why do you have the right to stop them from getting married? Because you happen to believe it's absolutely true that your God is true. Okay, you can believe that. What do you know to be absolutely true then? Name one thing that's absolutely true. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable saying scientific fact is true. Absolutely. But you true. just said that to do science, it has to be falsifiable. If it's falsifiable, That's how we know it's, it's not true. necessarily That's true. How we know. Facts. Once you get to be, you have facts. Those are facts. Those aren't falsifiable. Theories are are falsifiable. Well, you're not um, justifying your position, Bess. That's so that's problem. that's okay. Um, you don't have to justify your position. So I can say whatever I want without justifying it, and it's okay. Okay. Is that that's what you just said? Sure. You said it doesn't matter. I think that that most people will understand what I'm saying. I think most people understand that we haven't gotten the justification for our belief system. From, from you, I've justified mine. I've said, I know what I know based on a revelation from the one who knows everything. I'm asking you how you know what you know and we've gotten nothing yet other than it doesn't yeah, matter, been, that's been, ridiculous, been, that's, been, that's silly talk. Okay. So I know what I know based on revelation from God. How do okay. you know what you know, Ben? I know what I know. How do you know that? It's <laughs> um, uniformity, Facts that are that remain facts, um, and let's see, what else can we? Okay, here's another one that creationists claim that. Okay, creationists claim that if evolution was true, you would have like a crocodile turning into a good duck. Since how, we don't see that, how do you know that? Ben? Then we then evolution can't be true. Really, what that is, that would hey, be. On. How do you know that? You just made a claim. I want to know how you know that to be true. That would be uh, that would be creationism if something magically just turned into half of something else. Um, uh, that evolution doesn't happen that way. How do you know that to be true? So, um, you see, but evolution is as uh, we see evolution. They always are saying you can see microevolution, so we believe microevolution, but it can't change into a different species. All they're talking about is. A time issue. How do you know that to be true, Ben? Microevolution. Um, I've studied. I've played your philosophy games. Long but you're not. You're not. Can I get up here and just say whatever I want without you justifying are. it? You have. No. Can I say, hey, pink bunnies eat green grass in the snow on top of Mars? If you said, if you said, how do you know that to be true? I, you would. Ex you would expect the Christian to justify his claim. That's right. I'm asking the atheist to justify her claim, and she's saying, I don't have to. That's right. Because it's not ridiculous. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's how, do you know that, how do you know that to be true? <laughs> you just made a claim. It's not ridiculous. How do you know that that's not true? ridiculous by talking about scientific facts. How do you know that that's true? Jeff was saying you wanted some Q&A. Okay, we'll do some Q&A since this hasn't gone anywhere. And uh, I, let, me, let me finish with this. Jesus did not die just to save souls for eternity. He died to save our very reason and our very thought process right now. And if we don't start with the God of Scripture, we can't justify our reasoning. We can't justify our thoughts. We can't justify truth. Nothing so. is justified. Okay. Uh, okay. Jesus kind of stole the act from Horus and Mithras. Um, there are how, a lot do, how do you know that to be true, Beth? There are a lot of gods that, that did the same thing. They, they uh, died, were resurrected after three days, Do you know died that? for our sins. Do you know that? Um, they, are you going to justify so like any claim you make? It kind of makes, it, it makes it's odd that, that suddenly Jesus would come along and the story <laughs> has already been told these other ways. So that kind of, that, that lends a lot of uh, skepticism to me okay. for your hey, Jesus Beth? claims. No, he didn't. No, he didn't what? No, he didn't. That's, okay. not, that's not true. Are we both right? Because you won't justify your truth claim. You're trying to make truth claims. I'll just deny and say, no, he didn't. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Okay, so really conversation doesn't yeah, matter. The conversation is not possible between us. So I think we should just do equal time. We should go to that. Okay, so we'll have questions, but I just want to point out that you are refusing to justify anything you say. I'm trying to justify what I say. I'm getting down to the very your foundation. Your definition of justify, I would prefer to justify by, by it's you what can't we know justify, yeah? as... Um, how do we know what we know? What okay, we know? How do we know you that? You want to go to Q&A? Okay. Question. Well, here's what we'll do. We'll go back and forth. Somebody have a question for Beth. Somebody have a question for me. We'll go back and forth just to make it, uh, it fair like that. Okay?
So question number one, uh, who's it for? Um, it's for you. Okay. It's a simple question. You're human, so you perceive, do you not? I do. So if you perceive, then, like when you were saying her sense, she knows her senses are real by her senses. You perceive in the same way she does because you are human. In that sense, you also perceive the Bible in the same way she does or would perceive the Bible because you are human. If her senses are subject to doubt and falsification, which I would say they are based on scientific principle, then so are yours and so is the perception of the Bible. I would say that arguing, let me rephrase it. This is a my question, question right? My question okay. is, that's why I said let me rephrase and get to my question. Can you perceive the Bible extrasensory? Outside your senses, can you sense the Bible? No, I cannot. That's my question. Okay, the answer sense. is no, I cannot. Let me ask you something. Please is, do. well, I guess we're taking questions. Yeah, that's why. I let, let me just follow that up with a statement then. Um, if what you just claimed was you would agree that you sense that your senses are valid, right? My senses are my only tool. Could your senses Everything be, we perceive is, what we perceive. is it possible that your senses are not reliable? That is more than possible, but it's okay. possible. So for how do you humanity. know that? How do you know that they're not deceiving you right now? Evidence. I know through repeatability. I can say this bottle is what? here. I can drop it, pick it up. I can say it's here. I can't know this is here, but I can. There I say go. I know it's here. No, you just on, can't. I, gotcha. I say I gotcha. know it's here right based on. Using. Hold on. I say I know it's here based on preponderance of evidence. In what are you using grand... to interpret that evidence? Tactile. I'm using my sense of touch. There we go. We're using our senses to validate our senses. Which is, and that's how all humans work. Okay. You can't perceive outside is, of sensory input. Is that circular? It is. It but, is. There we which go. is why it's invalid, but it's also the only place we can there argue. There we go. You can't say that you know something outside your senses any more than I can, so if we're going to have a discourse, then we have to suppose that our senses are valid. But you if can't our senses are not, if No, if our senses okay. are not valid, the, hold on, if our senses are not valid, then we don't experience reality. And if we don't experience reality, then we are talking about a philosophical baseline that cannot be proven nor disproven. I can't prove to you my senses are valid. I Perfect. can't prove to you that they aren't valid. Perfect. Therefore, it's not worth talking about in the sense that it doesn't affect how we sense. If, if we both sense things in similar ways, then we both, would you say this bottle is here? I would say, I, not just I think, I know that bottle is there. You do you know, do you know absolutely for certain that that bottle is there? I would say here? that you can't know that bottle is here. And I would say that your belief in God gives you no special outside of sense advantage in knowing that this bottle is here. Except that it gives me revelation from the one who knows everything. But just how do you get that revelation? Your worldview yeah. just well, said, Mm -hmm. Your worldview just said you don't even know if the bottle's there. I just want to point that out. Yes, it's not you. my worldview that says it's possible the bottle couldn't be there. It's the atheist worldview that says the bottle could possibly not exist, could not be there. Just want to point that out. Small possibility. Hold on. It's an infinitely small possibility, but yes, my worldview says this bottle may not be here as I perceive it. However, you perceive the same way I do, so your God may not be there as you perceive it. So Unless are, you perceive differently than me. Are all things known through the senses? Are, is everything we know, is it all known through the senses? Everything we know is through the senses. Not all things are known through our senses. For instance, I don't see ultraviolet. I know ultraviolet is there. Ultraviolet wavelengths are there because... I have, because we have created devices that can detect those wavelengths, but we can't see those wavelengths. And those devices can't make us see those wavelengths. They can those let us know there's something there. Us, yeah. But once again, you can't sense outside of any sense I can. Now, if you can, please tell me that you can, and then that's the basis of your no, claim. No, that's not my claim. Okay. My claim, is, my question is, is, your claim is that all things are known through the senses other than, okay, we might have to get, you know, a, a piece of equipment to help us sense those things. But that's known through the senses as well, but in the sense the, that we can then, we transform information into a perceivable wavelength, okay. and then we can sense it. Okay, so what I want to know is if all things are known through the senses, where did you sense that? Where did I sense what? That all things are known through the senses. Once again, circular. You just said, like, you, I can't justify it. It's circular logic. So, right. oh, then it must be false. But you can't sense in any way I can. The reason I think this is um, not unuseful discourse is that 
The same way that I can say, I don't know this bottle is here, or you can say to me, your worldview says you don't know this bottle is here. You are absolutely correct. In yeah, that, your worldview says that. But right. what my worldview also says is that we as humans perceive the world as humans. We can't perceive it in any other how way. Do you know, how do you know that? Here. Could you be wrong about that? I could, one but second. are you going to tell one me second. I'm wrong So you don't that? know about that. I mean, but are you going to tell me I'm wrong about that? That's what I'm saying is that you nope. can't perceive God in any way I can't perceive. Right. You can't perceive extrasensory things. You it's, can't prove things outside the realm of evidence. The you can't read the Bible without eyes. Or, well, that's not 100% true, but you can't perceive God without senses. Yeah. And your senses, just like my senses, are subject to falsifiability. And my difference. only claim here okay. is that I have an avenue to certainty of my okay. senses. I understand that you and you're that. saying through your senses. Th there here's, is no avenue, no by, no by revelation from God. By revelation from God. Here's the difference. A real quick point. Here's the difference. The, the atheist world that, that he's talking about, I'm talking about, it's just... We're being honest, and you're making claims that are dishonest. Okay, be honest here. Can God reveal things via our senses? Could God do that? You have no could God, special could God do that? sensory you know perception that we don't. Could yeah, God we're just being honest about it. Okay, it answer is. this question honestly then. If could God omnipotent reveal omnipotent himself omnipotent. through our senses? If, you, if, if there exists okay. an omnipotent and omniscient being, I would say, which is why atheism is not universal, I would say he could reveal himself through our senses the same Correct. way that ultraviolet light can be revealed to us without our senses. But here's the problem. You can't do this without evidence. And you say that the Bible is evidence. I would argue that the Bible is the claim because the Bible was written by man. The Bible has been translated by man. Not all versions of the Bible are the same. The Bible contradicts itself. Now, I'm not suggesting that you don't have a right to have your worldview, but what I am suggesting is that you cannot, physically cannot, know God or have a direct avenue to truth that is outside your perception. It's not possible. And that is an absolute truth. Is you it can't perceive things that you cannot perceive. Is it's a it paradox. Im is it impossible for the Bible to be what it claims to be? It is not impossible. It is infinitely improbable. Now, and and the Bible, how would you even know that? Well, because the Bible says things that are demonstrably false. Or I disagree. Obviously, here we got you and, know. and that's a disagreement. Or that the Bible presents things that happen without the preponderance of evidence. Okay. In a scientific journal, if I say I did this, I can repeat that. When you say Jesus turned water into wine, it's not repeatable because it's a miracle and it's not meant to be repeated but that's not evidence that is the distinct lack of evidence and an explanation for that lack of evidence so you say things in the bible are false well, some yeah. things are false not okay. everything in the bible is false so maybe you can answer it what is truth truth is from the human perspective what we can perceive as true you say absolutely we can't know truth. you just said truth is true truth is absolute fact we can't know truth do you know that to be true I know. <laughs> you said paradox. you cannot paradox. know truth. That is paradoxical. Exactly. That is That's the, the point. problem with the atheistic worldview. You, you can't know truth. Max, you can't know truth. That's so the point. You just said. It's paradoxical said, for us to know truth because we know our senses are fallible. So, so you the said. the same okay. set of arguments for the belief in Christianity or the Bible. It is exactly the same. You decide that you accept it as true and that makes it true. So, it doesn't mean that I mean, it is true. If I Bible say that I perceive that the Bible is true, is it therefore true? For you, it's a I would say this. God exists. I'm an atheist, but God exists because God is a concept. God was created by man, not the other way around. No, yeah, that's not the God I'm talking exists. about. I told you about the God I'm talking about. I'm not arguing for a made-up God. I'm arguing for the, the God that Who is cares? spirit. Show it to me today. Uh, that's all. Can't. Just screw it. Here's what I'm saying. Here, yeah, here's what I'm saying. I just want to point out, your worldview says it is true that there's you cannot know truth. My, it's paradoxical. There you go. Because existence is paradoxical. So proof presupposes my worldview. What I'm saying is that because as you can't being, prove anything, as a human and being, you can't either. as a human being, <laughs> and can, here's can you prove that? That you can prove it? <laughs> right. Sure. Because if you can prove well, it, you, you would be sitting on the table right now, and the discussion would be over. No. 
Perfect. The thing is, is that that's exactly the trap we're in. We take a paradoxical position because that paradoxical position works. I can't prove to you right now, I can't say to you that combustion works the way it does. I can't prove it without, you know, a shadow of a doubt. What I can prove to you is that you got here in the car. Just, get as much as you I can prove to you that the internal combustion engine so works. So you can know that to be on, true? That is based that's on, that's true. based on, that's, know, based, on, you that's based on repeatability. And that is why I say that even though truth as an abstract concept can never be attained, truth as a practical concept is known through repeatability, and so that even though I can't say absolutely that this bottle is here, I can know it's here and know that's the truth is based on the repeatability of the preponderance of the evidence. Is what you said absolutely true? As an abstract concept, no. As a practical concept, yes. And now we're talking about semantics, and we're talking can about... Let's get some questions back here. Okay. No, can, can God reveal truth to us? Does anybody have a question let's, for Beth? Let's, Since let's, somebody let's, was asking me a bunch of questions. I, I have a question for, for both of you. First, I, I'm an atheist, I want to thank you for having a valid epistemology. So my question is, uh, do moral propositions present facts about the universe? His question is, do moral... Do moral propositions, so if I utter a moral sentence... Do moral propositions... Utter, are they factual? Are they facts about the universe? Are they factual? Yeah. Beth, are moral propositions factual? Well, I just I hate uh, philosophical discussions. Um, well, I can see why. Are then. moral are moral propositions? What did you say? Are, are, moral, are moral propositions they express a fact about the universe? Because philosophy it comes before science, so I mean that's why I think Mr. Owens does a great job here as an atheist. But I mean, it's okay. it's moral or moral well, proposition. The thing with philosophy is, it, it you can make a completely logical, coherent argument, and it's not it is not tied to any empirical facts, it sounds good, but it's it's pointless. I, I, I can anticipate Mr. Hogan's response. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. When, I, I, when they're based on the character of God, sure. You can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Eric Hovind.